Brandon Farbstein was diagnosed with a rare form of dwarfism at the age of two. He is now 22, and he is a renowned speaker, Gen Z activist, and author inspiring millions with his message. Brandon, so glad that you could make time for KUSI. Welcome to our airwaves. Good morning, Paul. Thank you so much for having me on this morning. Oh, come on, man. It's our honor. Uh, let's first just get right into it. Your book, uh, 10 Feet Tall, is coming out later this week. So actually, my new kids book is what will be coming out in just a couple of days. It's called A Kid's Book About Self-Love. You see it right behind me there. Okay. And I am so excited to be bringing my message now to a new audience where I've already been speaking for about six years now to conferences and companies and schools, but never really to young kids. And this message, which is so universal, is really necessary now more than ever. So the 10 feet tall that I miss, that was your adult book and that's already out selling like gangbusters. This is specifically for kids ages. Exactly, ages five to nine, but I really believe it's gonna be just as powerful for the grown-ups reading it as it will be for those kiddos as well. How do you, as an author, how do you alter your message from an adult book to a kid's book? To be honest, it was bringing myself back to that point in my life and thinking about what I needed most when that version of Brandon was a young kid and didn't have self-love, didn't have the ability to look in the mirror and see the awesomeness that was within him. And that is exactly who I'm writing this book or who I did write this book for. And I think it is going to be a catalyst to really instill empathy and this true self-acceptance within an entire generation. What's the one thing, if it could only be one thing, and I know you want it to be multiple things, but if it could be only one thing that a young reader will come away with after reading your book, what would the message be? It really is to see that our uniqueness is our superpower. We don't need to have a disability or a medical condition or a really external circumstance in order for us to see that we were born with such incredible things within us and it may make us stand out or we may be like the people around us, but who we are is absolutely extraordinary and we should celebrate that. When did you realize, when were you aware that, hey, I am unique? It really was after I reached a point of quite literally not wanting to be here anymore when I was about 11 years old. And I started a process of therapy and counseling and also understanding that it was up to me to decide how I see myself. And so those te early teenage years for me were really important to discover that I truly was in the driver's seat and there was always going to be things happening around me, people saying mean things or staring or reacting in a negative way, but I could ultimately show up with positivity and empathy and that will rub off. Brandon, kids can be particularly cruel. I mean, it's a mean world and, and, and it's only gotten meaner with social media and Facebook and, and we're, you know, we're reading all about it now about how uh, the, some of the evil side effects of social media. What, what, what is the role of social media in the cruelty that we're experiencing? Oh, I think it is everything in what is going on. As somebody that suffered some of the most severe cyberbullying that you can imagine in high school, I received death threats on a near weekly basis from the peers at my school. And I realized the true power of social media. We could either use it for connection and for good and to share what's going on in our lives. It doesn't have to be positivity all the time, but we could also use it to hurt others and in turn hurt ourselves because it's this endless cycle until it's stopped it's just gonna keep getting worse. And that's why I'm such a firm believer in empathy. We have to have it not only for other people, but for ourselves first and foremost. And so that and self-love really go hand in hand. Well, I guess I would be encouraged, obviously you're encouraged by how well the books sell and you have to be encouraged by your Instagram following. You have, you know, every day it's going up by another thousand or so. Uh, does that give you hope for the future that maybe one day we're gonna live in a world where we're, instead of, pointing out each other's differences, we're gonna point out 
focus on our commonality? Very much so. Every day I'm seeing the needle move just a little bit more towards inclusion and towards equality, especially for the disability community and so many other groups that have been ignored for so long. But that's what it's about, seeing the bigger picture, that it's not just about us. It's about widening the lens through which we see the world, which then, in fact, can change our world. And I think that is what we need right now especially well we should let people know this is just the tip of the iceberg of our first conversation it's going to continue tomorrow on the ppr podcast where we're going to dwell into this much deeper because uh, i you know i i realize you're not on the football team but you can still speak to athletes overcoming obstacles and dealing with the cruelty that happens in the locker room and things like that so i think it's going to be a really important message and i'm really looking forward to uh having that but right for the time being where can folks buy your book you could find it on a kids company about.com or if you just search a kids book about self love on Google, it'll be the first thing that comes up online. And it also will be in some independent bookstores as a new San Diego native or local, not native. Uh, I'm hoping to get it into some stores down here. So stay tuned. Man, I, I wish we would make it part of the curriculum for all schools. I, I think it would be a really you know, something we should consider. We'll bring that up tomorrow, okay? So, uh, Absolutely, Brandon. Absolutely, Paul. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm really looking forward to you, uh, our longer conversation with Bert, because he has a lot of insight as well, and I, I think you're going to really enjoy it. We'll, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 1015. Really appreciate it. Thanks again for having me on. All right. In the meantime, everybody, go out and buy the book. Don't buy one, buy two. He has, he's an author of many books, so please, uh, just get them all.